Hi everyone and thanks for being here. The NVIDIA RTX 4070 Ti Super is here and since there is no founder editions we got the ASUS Tough Gaming to test and see how it performs, to check some temps and why not to try some overclocking too. Alright guys, while unboxing and check what are the accessories inside that came with the GPU, let's go through some specs. The RTX 4070 Ti Super has 8448 shader cores and a base clock of 2340MHz, so it has 30MHz more than the RTX 4070 Ti. But the main changes here are in the memory, so the RTX 4070 Ti Super has 16 gigs of GDDR6X and the memory bus is 256 bits, so it's the same as the RTX 4080 and we have an increase of memory bandwidth up to 672 gigabit per second while the TDP remains of 285 watts. So here we have the GPU itself, we will get to the details in a minute and here we have some ties for the cable management, here there is the power cable, this GPU needs maximum 450 watts of power so you have the cable with only two of these connectors here because as you might know one of these is delivering 150 watts. So you are okay with that. We have this nice accessory which is the GPU stand but it's also a screw. So if you open it like so it's a screw for helping you installing the GPU. And here we have some menus and some card on how to install the GPU and how to connect the power cables. Right so here we have the GPU. As we can see this is a really beefy GPU. It's a three slot GPU so you need plenty of space in your case for installing the, this GPU. Overall I do like the design of the Tough Gaming series from ASUS. I believe they have almost the same quality of the ROG Strix. So here we have this part which is plastic. We have this really beefiest heat sink which is going to help us dissipate the heat and I have to say that ASUS lately have done a good job with designing all the heat sinks and maintaining low the temps. And here we have the three fans. As you can see these fans have a combining spinning so these fans are spinning anti-clockwise and this fan here is spinning clockwise for optimizing all the airflow and so on. Here on the back we have the back plate which is completely metal and here we have this grid for allowing to dissipate all the heat that is coming from the PCB and also from the heat sink. This GPU does have a uh, minimum of RGB, this logo here and on this part here. One thing that I appreciate here is that you have the pins here for disconnecting the fans and for disconnecting the RGB. If you don't want the RGB you can just simply disconnect the cable here and disable completely the RGB without using any software and so on. This is something that I appreciate, not all the GPUs have this kind of tricky thing let me say. So in terms of connection and support this GPU has 3 display port and 2 HDMI port. I appreciate also that because not all the GPUs have 2 HDMI ports. As you can see here we have the usual power connection of 16 pins, the TDP of this GPU is 280 maximum 300 in case you are overclocking and so on. So here we have the performance and quiet switch if you put on quiet the fans will spin a little bit less than the usual so you will have more quiet system but the temps might be a little bit higher. If you switch on the performance mode you will have the fans spin higher and then you are going to have lower temps and a little bit of higher performances. So let's install the GPU into the system and check some synthetic bench and some gaming bench and also let's go through some temps and check if we can overclock somehow. Alright guys, here we have some synthetic bench on 3D Mark, as we can see the results are pretty high. Also the overall temperature are between 60 and 65 degrees. So let's jump to some games and check the performances also there. Keep in mind that this is a GPU that we're going to aim to 1440p gaming, so the majority of the tests will going to be in 1440p with ultra or high settings. Major Max! Not one! It needs retrieving. Coordinates provided. Head there. Quite simple as these things go. 
Except, you should expect animals prowling. Likely feral. Details attached. A.V., hope it's not a bad time. Uh, some news trickled down the Ripper grapevine. Thought it might interest you. Cut the foreplay, Vic. Spill. <laughs> well, some implant soft updates just hit the streets. Completely fresh batch. Useful as hell, Ripper say. Drop the dime to you first, as well. I'm rooting for you, kid. I'd love to see you get ahead of the pack. Now guys, if you want to tweak some settings on the RTX 47 Ti Super, you can use the GPU Tweak 3. This is the version 1.7.2.3. So as we can see, we have this overview of the GPU Tweak. I've done a video of how to use GPU Tweak with all the settings and advanced settings. I will leave that video down in the description so you guys can check it out and tweak as much as you want your GPU. Anyway, here we have four different settings, which is the default mode, which will leave all the settings on default. Also mode, as we can see, it's going to increase the GPU boost clock of 30 megahertz and the power target is going to be aimed at 110 percent while the gpu temp target is going to remain the same at 84 degrees in this case it's more than okay the gpu itself it's not going to reach that much high temps unless you are installing this gpu in an it system and in that case you might want to click also the gpu temp target so this is just a simple thing that you might do just click on oc mode and then from then check your performances and, and gain some fps more on your games or on your applications you can go also with the oc scanner if you click on this is scanner you are going to let the app itself scan the capabilities of the gpu to be overclocked or to apply a voltage frequency curve so in that case the app is going to apply the best voltage frequency curve depending on your gpu and depending on all the settings so you can click on start or you can change certain of these settings here by aiming a certain temps or aiming a memory clock offset and uh, whatever i would suggest you always to start with the default settings and then click on start and then let the app do all the changes and apply all the settings settings anyway keep in mind that with the oc mod or with your oc scanner certain games and certain apps might crash or you might find strange artifacts on the game and so on so if you notice that just go back to default mode and then everything should work properly as a stuff gaming 4070 ti super is a really powerful gpu in 4040p titles you can throw every title and it can handle it easily but with tweaking some settings and with a slight overclocking we can aim also 4k gaming the difference with the rtx 4070 ti is mainly in memory capacity and bandwidth including a slight increase in the core clock which can be helpful in different scenarios but don't expect an impressive jump in performances the asus tough gaming rtx 4070 ti super has an msrp of 800 dollars consider that depending on where you live and taxes this might be a little bit different i will let decide you guys if that's a good price or not so let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts about it if you found this video helpful and informative please hit the subscribe button like and share the video drop a comment and let me know your thoughts about the asus tough gaming rtx 4070 Ti Super. Thanks for watching.